Today we're talking about 10 of our favorite open world gangster games of all time. If it's anything closely connected to the mafia, gangster lifestyle, or organized crime stuff, we're talking about it today. It's kind of a broad category and it's hard to narrow down to our favorites, but we're looking forward to hearing yours in the comments too. So let's get started off with number 10 and talk about The Getaway, probably one of the more unique and often forgotten games on our list because it focuses on organized crime in like a hyper-realistic London, at least at the time for a PS2 game. Uh, this incredibly large and faithfully recreated London dealt with all sorts of organized crime in London, fr from Soho to, to the Yardies. There was a lot going on here and you played as someone thrust into it all after you finally got out, you're pulled back in because of your family. You get caught up in the world of the Kingpin, Charlie Jolson and everything that goes on. It's just mean and gritty and nasty and bloody and, and really freaking cool. The game, you know, to compare like to movie fans, it's very much like a Guy Ritchie type of thing. It feels very much like a lock, stock, and two smoking barrels, a snatch type of thing. And for good reason, it was really awesome, incredibly underrated, and it did have a lot of technical shortcomings and, and weird gameplay quirks. But still, the story, the world, and just the good, gritty London gangster thing was really, really special. Black Monday, the sequel, put you more into the criminal underworld, but that game was even more messy, so we're really focusing on just the original getaway here because we thought it was a gem. Now, next at number nine, a game that wasn't received as well, but we like it, is Driver Parallel Lines. This was a little bit of a shift for the Driver series because in this one you played as TK, not Tanner, the usual driver guy. Uh, TK is a criminal getaway driver uh, who gets wrapped up in organized crime in New York City in both the 70s and in modern times. It was actually really cool what the game did in terms of the story. It would shift between uh, like 1978 to 2006, you know, two very, very different New York. We're from New York, uh, the city changes at a very rapid pace, and this game did a fairly decent job of showing that, but also giving you a lot of cool car chases and smashing cop cars, and just doing crimes, especially with like a little bit of a cool funky 70s vibe. It was definitely one of the more criminal focused games of the Driver series, so that's why we're talking about it. That series, overall now in, in 2020, does not get enough love. Driver San Francisco is still worth pointing out too. But in terms of good old criminal gangsterness, Driver Parallel Lines is probably one of the better driver games for that. It was a little rough, hasn't aged well, but we wanted to talk about it, damn it. We argued about it here. Now over at number eight, we have Scarface, The World Is Yours, which honestly, before this game came out, we all remember sitting around talking about how bad it was probably gonna be, and we were completely surprised because Scarface was an over-the-top, weird, quirky crime simulator game that was just a blast to play. Yes, the story essentially is Scarface, Tony Montana himself actually surviving the incident at the end of the original Scarface film, which is ridiculous, but uh, you essentially go on to kind of rebuild an empire and uh, it, it kind of devolves into you, Scarface, wielding rocket launchers, shooting them from cars, uh, running around Miami, blowing stuff up, fighting cops. It was pretty big, it was pretty comprehensive, and, and honestly, it was just big, bombastic, dumb fun. You could go into Tony Montana rage mode, where he would just scream obscenities. You could be super powered. I still, to this day, can't believe this game was made. Really, I shit you not. Like, if you've never heard of it or, or, or anything about it, you should really look into it. Anyone that loves anything Scarface, might like this if they don't take it too seriously because it, it, it is truly something special. It is very much an odd point in video game history, but a ton of fun. Now, if we're talking about fun movie-based crime gangster games, we have to talk about The Godfather. And, you know, for that matter, The Godfather too. But the first one was really, really special. First of all, as someone who grew up with The Godfather, it was like almost like an institution of my family. We would watch it like once a month. Uh, the Godfather did a pretty good job at like weaving its way into uh, Francis Ford Coppola's, you know, excellent historical film based on the Mario Puzo novel. You create your own character that gets wrapped up in the Corleone crime family and you rise up through the ranks, uh, through different positions, all while facing off against uh, other rival New York City gangs at the time and there were some really good you know godfather world building here uh, not only that it just really captured that vibe you know that gangster stuff 
of that time period while also getting to see some fan favorites like of course Don Vito Corleone, Luca Brasi, Sonny Corleone, Tommy Hagen. It, it was really surprising just how fun it was too from a gameplay mechanic. Uh, you were very much tasked with not only, you know, killing other gang members, uh, running from police and chases and stuff, but also enforcing your mob rule and cracking down on shop owners and threatening them and making them pay up. It was really cool for that stuff, I'm not gonna lie. And then The Godfather 2 uh, focused on, you know, mostly the coastal move for The Godfather Part 2 actually had. Uh, focuses way more on the management aspects. I didn't find it as much fun, but a lot of people really, really love it. Either way, whichever one you go with, they're just good old criminal gangster games. And there's not much better than The Godfather father, you know what I mean? Now over at number six, we're gonna shift gears a little bit and talk about a, a different type of criminal empire and talk about the Yakuza series. Now, uh, these games are awesome. We've been touting them for years uh, because they do a really good job of balancing over the top crazy ridiculousness and, and cartoony brawler combat action in the streets with some melodramatic storytelling that rides a great line of like not taking itself too seriously, but also uh, being pretty important focusing around Yakuza crime families in Japan. In a, you know, made up city district of Kamurocho, and you play as Kazuma Kiru, who uh, goes on a lot of adventures, and I, I mean a lot, like these games are vast, and a lot of stuff goes down that we can't talk about here, but essentially, you are the most badass, dangerous man on the streets of Japan, nobody can cross you, you're tough as nails, you can fight off other gang members just like that. I definitely recommend starting from the beginning with Yakuza 0 and seeing Kazuma's essential rise through the criminal ranks. The games just get better and better, they're all really special, we love them, and we take any opportunity to talk about them. Next up at number five, we're gonna mention Red Dead Redemption 2, believe it or not, because so much of the game revolves around being in a gang, learning what it's like to work with other people that are essentially running from something in their past life, and you form this merry band that is Dutch Vanderlyn's gang, and the adventures that ensue are pretty crazy. First of all, you get to see this gang a little bit past their heyday, but still very much a fully formed group. Uh, a mission had gone horribly, horribly wrong. People died. The feds are after you. Things are dire. But uh, as Arthur Morgan, you you play as someone who essentially grew up in this gang. This life of crime and this life of uh, being a rebel is pretty much all you know. Now, I will say with Red Dead Redemption 2, the, the Vanderlyn gang doesn't come off initially as like the most hardened band of criminals just people trying to, you know, scrape out a life in the Midwest more so. But still, you do some very illegal shit in these games and that is absolutely worth pointing out. As much as there are some good dudes in that gang, there are also some dastardly dudes. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Micah. Regardless, if we're talking about open world uh, gangster criminal games, we'd be silly to not mention Red Dead Redemption 2 because it totally encompasses that. Now down to number four, we gotta give some love to Sleeping Dogs, the Hong Kong criminal action adventure game that yes, I know technically the main character is an undercover cop, but you're infiltrating the mob and that is completely what the game is focused on and uh, for good reason. The game is fun as hell, it's incredibly violent, it's action packed like an over the top movie in a lot of ways. I think in terms of cinematic elements and action set pieces, it, it's up there with Grand Theft Auto and the likes. But that Hong Kong Chinese action cinema feel they add to this just makes it that much more special. And although it is very much a game like many other games that are open world crime carjacking games, and still years after, we highly recommend it, man. Now at number three, we gotta talk about Saints Row. Maybe we're gonna stick a little bit to the original Saints Row, uh, Saints Row 2, and maybe sort of Saints Row the third, because those are the games that really focused on the Third Street Saints. This gang in this fictional city that wore purple, they were founded by Julius Little, and it just really served as really cool gang imagery and you got to know a really colorful cast of characters throughout these games where the first game was straight up for real a Grand Theft Auto clone taking advantage of the next console generation at the time. Uh, the, by the second game and then really the third game, uh, the Saints Row series really evolved into its own. And sure, now with later games, they've really kind of uh, strayed away from the crime family uh, gang stuff. The quirky gang elements that were in the earlier games were still really, really fun from customizing cars to, to picking out how you would rock your colors to fighting rival gangs in the streets. You know, all that stuff was a blast. And like I mentioned, like at first this really started out as a GTA clone. I'm glad it evolved past that because like it's really good that this series exists because even the newest games are just so over the top and really awesome that like I couldn't imagine an alternate universe video game world where we don't have Saints Row games. You know what I mean? But I digress. Let's move on. And of course, 
talk about the Grand Theft Auto series at number two. Now, they're all very specific and very different. For me, personally, if we're talking about like criminal gangster elements, I'm gonna focus on Grand Theft Auto 3 for all of the Liberty City gang stuff you get involved in, a lot of mafia type stuff, uh, to Vice City, which of course deals with a bunch of uh, Colombian cocaine dealers, Haitian gangs, and you building up a Scarface empire. And of course, San Andreas, which deals with Grove Street and like real West Coast gang type of stuff in the early 90s. Also too, if you wanna talk about gangs, I guess the Lost and Damned as well. The Grand Theft Auto 4 expansion really focuses on that group dynamic. Really you can interpret it any any Grand Theft Auto game has open world criminal gang empire elements and at this point like the Grand Theft Auto is probably our most talked about series on game ranks I don't know how much more there is to say about any of them but imagine we just didn't talk about them that would be really funny personally we still think that that era of them like Grand Theft Auto 3 Grand Theft Auto Vice City Grand Theft Auto San Andreas uh, those games are still totally worth revisiting to this day for that open world gangster charm you know now down to number one, of course, you knew we were gonna talk about it. We weren't gonna forget it, come on guys. Mafia 2. Now we've talked about a lot of open world gangster games, but if we're narrowing it down to specifically uh, mafia focused, there's not as many games out there for this, but Mafia 2 is one of the best and it's why we love it. Now the original Mafia really paved ways and served as a very different alternative to the Grand Theft Auto stuff at the time, uh, but Mafia 2 took the time to really tell a very interesting story and have some solid gameplay as well and just really Really nailed the presentation from the vibe, the voice acting, uh, the licensed music that was pretty damn incredible. And it's just really a great game all around and, and worth replaying, honestly. We did recently and yeah, it's still good. It's not as completely open world like do anything you want as, you know, something like a Saints Row or a Grand Theft Auto. They focus more on the story here, but in terms of like simulating you being a mafia guy rising through the ranks, you know, in a criminal empire, it's great for it. Mafia kind of changed directions with three. I'm one of the few people that still enjoys it, but I can't deny Mafia 1 and 2 are still like way better. And Mafia 2 is just really something you should check out if it wasn't on your radar before. Those are some games, those are our picks, but of course we got some bonus ones for you because there's so many. First of all, the true crime games. We gotta mention them because that has a lot of criminal activity. They're rough around the edges, they haven't aged well, but uh, yeah. Uh, also, we gotta mention Mafia Wars. Do any of you remember that? Anybody else have uh, MySpace? Also, Rockstar Games is The Warriors, which was based on the film from the 70s, uh, focusing on New York City uh, youth street gangs. It was a beat em up brawler, and uh, it, it was really good and very, very faithful to the movie it was based on. You should probably watch that too. Uh, also, Gangsters Organized Crime. Uh, that, this was the first one that eventually got a sequel. It's a little less open world, but it's more of like a top-down planning, uh, you know, gangster simulator. And the same thing goes for Omerta, City of Gangsters, uh, which is more of a strategy approach, uh, but gives you a look and, and control of Atlantic City. Those were a lot of really fun games to talk about, but there are more out there. So we'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Like I said, some of your favorite open world gangstery, mafia, criminal games. Let us know, guys. Maybe you have the same games as us. Maybe your order's a little bit different. We don't take the order too seriously, but we'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments. However you write out your favorite games, we want to see. Uh, but of course, if you enjoyed this video, maybe learned about a new game or old game, uh, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We'd really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. As always though, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.